oldest known drawing of a building is from 2500 BC. Right now, the building industry is still based on a two-dimensional set of communication. The amount of waste that we have currently in the process is, uh, is staggering. Two-dimensional drawings like plans and elevations and packages and stacks like that are really not intuitive, not just to the professional, um, but a lot more to our customers. We've got to go back and we've got to find a better ways to do, do things. Since the Egyptians built the pyramids, architects and engineers have looked for ways to better visualize a building in the design process and improve on construction efficiency. The mission of GSA's Public Building Service is to provide quality workplaces for the federal government. In 2003, GSA launched the National 3D, 4D Building Information Modeling Program. It uses computer modeling technology to create a virtual building before construction starts. The goal of 3D, 4D BIM is to promote value-added digital visualization, simulation, and optimization technologies to increase building quality and efficiency. We want to move more of the effort up front and, and look at how we really kind of virtually design and, and construct a building before we get out there. And then that's going to lower the overall cost. It's going to lower the energy cost. It's going to lower the cost of our sustainability and everything else. BIM as a technology allows us to integrate uh, the different components of the design and the assemblies of the projects and to have a seamless flow in between design and construction. BIM is an opportunity for everybody to collaborate in a consistent, uniform way and share information. And find out where all the interferences uh, between different systems occur. Find them all while they're on the computer. That's early, while it's on the computer, not while it's on the construction site. We now can shorten the duration of a validation process from hours to minutes. If with BIM, you can do energy analysis, you can do circulation analysis, spatial program validation, or just a wide variety of analysis that the architects used to have to spend a lot of time um, doing um, these tedious kinds of things, whereas we can do it in the computer now and allow the architects to do what they do best. This is not unlike uh, what happened with the uh, uh, car industry, where the design process for a, for a car is much shorter now than it used to be many years ago, and the cars are a lot more efficient. You know, the BIM revolution is happening all around us right now. 3D, 4D, and building information modeling are different, yet integrated technologies. 3D models are the geometric representation of building components, and typically aid in visualization and coordination of design and construction. So going to a 3D model where the fabricators, the assemblers, the people on site uh, all understand where everything is in the building is a huge contribution by itself, just in communication and understanding. I think drawings uh, in their current form will disappear in the next 10 years. 4D models take a 3D model and add the element of time. They can include information on project phasing, tenant sequencing, and construction scheduling. Using a building information model, it's possible to create 2D and 3D views of the model. You can also generate 2D drawings for bid documents and 3D renderings and walkthroughs. But the real power of BIM comes from the fact that the model includes more specific product information on a range of elements and systems associated with a proposed building. For example, Floors, spaces, doors, air handling units, and geospatial information. For building renovations, 3D laser scanning can help to document existing conditions to create accurate, as-built models. And the mechanical trade is telling us and everyone, I hope, that they can reduce their labor costs by 20% by fabricating off of coordinated 3D models. The fuzzy part of it is the building, building information modeling, the, the verb, the collaboration part of it. And I don't think the industry has quite figured out how we're supposed to collaborate, how we're really supposed to talk to each other in the industry. It's not just the tool, but it's how the tool affects our current processes and how it's going to change our current processes. We've always kind of been in silos, if you will, uh, separated and passed information, kind of thrown it over the transom to the next guy. And now we're working together as a collaborative group. That's what we're really trying to accomplish.
3D 4D BIM has helped AEs to realize cost savings, stay ahead of schedule, and design better buildings. In January 2008, GSA hosted 15 industry experts at a roundtable discussion which assessed the progress of the 3D 4D BIM program. My sense is the fact that you're moving is what's important and you're moving forward. As we start making progress we lose sight very quickly of just how bad things work. You have to develop an approach that is industry-wide. Developing a sort of killer app, a specific use of these models and methods in-house with all steps to come along with it is, I think, really, really critical. But better technologies, better production practices, and opening the door for improving processes. It doesn't have to be all at once. I think you could begin to implement different aspects of integrated practice um, throughout the project, little by little, rather than trying to get there, you know, everything all at once. I would like to see you take on the construction design interface and, and to help us get direct design to fabrication and, and take the waste out of the industry. If, if everybody's using the same set of rules, you know, and producing it and then receiving it, you're, you should be able to have that information uh, it, it jump, the, it jump the chasm, if you will. We would rather make our mistakes in the virtual world other than ones that we may cause because we've, we've got to make some kind of a change in the process of the building. When a ductwork fabricator can go back in his shop and make a 50-foot piece of ductwork, with all the connections on it and bolt it right and bring it to the job site, bolt it in place right off of the data that came out of the model. Brought us so many benefits, it's just part of, we just, it's part of our DNA now to go out and do that. The question always is, how fast should we move? What should our roadmap? Is it next year that we do this? How do we challenge the industry? How do we do it in the most optimum way? Uh, collecting data over several years on all the projects really helped demystify some of the myths and where to really um, invest in the development and the implementation of BIM-based virtual design and construction methods. BIM is in its infancy of what people are going to realize in savings. Building information modeling and technology and sustainability seem to form this perfect storm around um, a real awareness or awakening around this total cost of ownership appreciation that they bring you back to what is the real purpose of building these buildings in the first place. GSA also held an international BIM workshop with partners from the US and Europe. Collaboration with public owners from other countries provides an opportunity to push for open standards around the world. I think it's a, a wonderful international cooperative effort to spur competition, uniformity in BIM application, and I really um, think it's a great, a great occasion. Um, yeah, we are also strongly committed to BIM modeling, and in uh, this way, it is also important to put a press for these issues. Although GSA projects have seen these successes, this is still not the industry standard. In order to encourage use of BIM, GSA has required it during the concept design stage of a building project. For all future projects receiving design funding, GSA will require spatial program BIMs for submission to the Office of the Chief Architect Capital Construction Programs. So with that we also were able to foster competition and to promote competition so that anybody who's talented enough to go after our work and be selected Regardless of the software that they use, as long as it's interoperable, we, uh, we consider that to be applicable. GSA is doing precisely the right thing. They are starting easy. Uh, we like to uh, take hard problems, break them down into small chunks so that they're doable, so that they're accomplishable, so that you can see success, early success, because it's the early successes that make for the later challenges that need to be addressed but you now have a baseline from which to do it from. GSA's 3D, 4D BIM program has been very important. I, I talked to a number of practitioners and more than once I've mentioned the word BIM and the first thing out of their mouth has been, uh, well, what do you think about what the GSA is doing? So it's had uh, the ability to get a lot of people's attention. They took leadership, they put a stake in the ground, they stuck their neck out and said this is the way it's going to be, and it's doing very well. And then they followed up on that with action. 
we didn't just go out there and say to the architects, here, go do this, figure it out, but we realized that this, it had a business value for GSA. So having agencies like GSA take a lead, I think raises the, the level. Uh, so in the private sector, I think they'll be able to follow along with a lot of the work that the agencies, uh, federal agencies have done. Three D, four D BIM will help stakeholders to understand buildings better and provide a tremendous opportunity for the design and construction community. GSA approached it in a manner where uh, we piloted several projects that were active and live projects and uh, found out what is, uh, tried to separate what the hype from the reality of the advances in the technology in the market and applied it on those projects and showed value in each one of those projects that, that eventually convinced our leadership that this needs to be a, an actual program and not just a pilot phase exploration of technology. We are not just doing technology for the sake of being innovative, for the sake of being cool because it's a nice thing to show. We do that because we are answering specific business questions because of the value it presents to GSA and the customer. Because if we don't, there will be consequences of all types. We will fall behind competitively. And if you think about it, it's not only going to change the way you all do, do business, it's going to change the way lots and lots of organizations across the, across the federal government, up and down industries, vertically and horizontally, are going to change. BIM is here. We are ready for BIM. It can help us to validate and find out any errors and omissions that, that our project team may be suffering. And in the end of the day, being able to test and simulate all this on the computer gave us a much better edge. To learn more about GSA's building information modeling, visit gsa.gov BIM.